we're here at Game On 2015 at, in Las Vegas. I'm here with uh, Rick Vanover, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the announcements that were made today, uh, specifically Veeam Backup for Linux, which I think is pretty exciting, being a Linux guy. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about the announcement and what exactly uh, Veeam for Backup for Linux is and when it's going to be out? Sure. So what Veeam Backup for Linux is, is really a new product that addresses basically a space of either the data center or workloads running in the cloud that we haven't been able to really help out with before. So what is Veeam Backup for Linux? First of all, might be a good you know, definition. It's, it's a product and it is going to really function as an agent-based backup because it's not meant for virtual machines, which is slightly different from everything else we've ever done, right? Right. But kind of looking back to last year, we announced Veeam Endpoint Backup, free. It's a free backup product for Windows systems. People were happy, at, but after about the third clap, they're like, what about Linux? Okay. Right. So that was very much the next question. So Veeam Backup for Linux is very much that answer. It just, you know, takes a while to do these types of things. But where we are today is that it is an announcement. But one very important thing was announced, and that is that it's basically an image-based backup without being integrated on a storage array, without being a virtual machine. So we've basically made a way, a mechanism to work with changed blocks on the whole file system of these Linux systems. So if you have critical workloads in a cloud, a hyperpublic cloud in particular, uh, or in the data center that are not virtualized, this is going to be a great way to give that protection level and integrate it from a target standpoint to a Veeam Backup and Replication Repository. So people are going to have some of the same things that they've come to know and like with Veeam from these new uh, addresses or new real estates uh, in the data center or in a cloud. So it's kind of like a, it's going to be a gateway for people to start using the product and get familiar with Veeam and and move into some of the other uh, management suites and stuff we have. Oh, absolutely. It is very much a gateway. And actually, I forgot the most important part about Veeam Backup for Linux, and that is that it will be free. And that alone will attract an audience. It will attract a user base, a community, and make that happen. Much like Veeam Endpoint Backup Free is that way. We've actually found people that are using the products in new ways and additional ways, and at scales that we didn't think, right? So. We, we know that this will happen with the Linux community as well, because that's basically a new community for us. Uh, there will be two uh, distros supported initially, but you know, we'll release notes once we have a beta. We'll have that all sorted out. But uh, we have big plans for it, and uh, it's expected to be out in the first half of next year. And as I understand it, it's, a, it's an agent that you install on a, on a Linux server, mm -hmm. and that allows you to then back up to your local storage or mm -hmm. wherever you'd like to, to back it up to, correct? Right. The, I guess the place we'd like to put it is a Veeam backup and repository so that basically if there is a Veeam installation, presumably a paid installation, right. then it can go there. But these extra surfaces, uh, these Linux workloads, would not require any additional cost because there will be a free product to do these backups. Great. And that brings me to... Uh, Veeam Availability Suite, you also announced uh, that version 9 is coming out. Um, can you tell me, you know, for, I guess tell me what new features are in 9 and what people might have missed uh, from the announcement? Yeah, and I think, you know, we've done a really good job of promoting version 9. Kind of can't miss it. But the thing is, is I guess I'll take this opportunity to kind of talk about some of the different things, right? You know, we're promoting the big things, EMC, VNX, and VNXE storage integration, uh, Veeam Explorer for Oracle, uh, Cloud Connect replication, the scale-out backup repository, HP Store Once Catalyst, and generic deduplication support. But some of my favorite things are actually not as promoted, and I'll really gravitate to one thing. It's called the direct NFS support. So last year when we announced our NetApp support, we actually learned a lot about NFS in that process. And that feature allowed us to do backups directly from storage snapshots. NetApp was the next array into that discussion, but they have a lot of NFS installations. So we couldn't say just fiber and iSCSI. We had to 
include the NFS systems. In fact, the feature backup from storage snapshots used to be called backup from SAN snapshots, but NFS is not a SAN, therefore we had to kind of change it a little bit, so a little bit of history there. And because of that, we were able to move data directly from the NetApp arrays, but we, like I said, we learned a lot about NFS. So now we have this feature, direct NFS backup, that in the sequencing of doing our backup, we're actually moving data directly from NFS sources. So uh, I, I really think that a lot of like SMBs who might be using small unified storage devices that have NFS, they can benefit from this data mover. But also, think of one of the new changes in the data center, the hyper-converged space, they almost always use NFS. So this technology will help them as well. And, you know, that's one of those things that we haven't promoted as much, but I actually think it's pretty powerful in the sense that we haven't put a number on it either, but in my lab, in my test, I've seen 25 to 40% improvement versus without the integrated, uh, the direct NFS integration. So it was substantial enough to make a difference. And I love kind of little enhancements like the knobs and dials. You know, we growing up in IT, we always liked that ability. This direct NFS technology is a way that we've actually done that in another form. So we've got another way to tweak it and speed it up and get more performance out of what we're doing for a backup. And a little tip for the listeners out there that that's something that we might not have really covered enough. And if you have anything running uh, NFS, uh, VMware virtual machines, you could really benefit from that. I think one of the great things about your products is that they scale across SMB and enterprise and make it easy to, to start using it as a small business. Um, but as you grow, you, you just gain the extra features that you... That, that has its learning curve and slash growing pains as well. In fact, we had a very interesting discussion yesterday with my uh, Veeam Vanguards, which is an influencer program we've launched. Right. And... Um, you know, they're like, well, the SMB uses it one way, the enterprise uses it in another, yet it starts with one ISO and one product, and it has to have an experience that can go both ways. It's very difficult both for us to message that way, and then secondly, to train people on how to use it. So it is nice that it can scale both ways, but it's also difficult for us to um, enable people to do that, because a lot of times peop uh, brands sometimes, okay, this product stops here and that product starts there. You know, and, but in our case, for the backup product, it, it has a very broad addressable market. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with uh, VM Blog, and uh, enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you for having me.